what do you suggest for us communally to help um, acquire wealth? Well, you know, um, we, we have a, well, one thing we believe in, man, at the Black Business School is what we call the Black Core of Three. Uh, the Black Core of Three is that we believe Black people should educate our own children, create our own jobs, and support Black businesses. And why, now, how does that fit into what you were, what you were just mentioning? Um, educating our own children, uh, first of all, that's just important to do because everybody else is, you know, they're pretty much fucking up our kids. I mean, hmm. it, it, all the studies show it, it's true. Um, the they devil's need, workshop is what, yeah, is what yeah they, they need to be it. fired, right? <laughs> there you go. Um, and so, uh, here's the other thing, too, though, uh, you can develop schools in a way where uh, they can be profitable and still really benefit the community. Uh, one of the things that uh, I believe we have to do as a community is understand some of the limitations that come from having an overly communist, socialist, Marxist influence on how we pursue black liberation. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, we go back to the Panthers and the civil rights movement and things like that. A lot of the influence behind the scenes was from that far left kind of category. And uh, Malcolm X though was more a little bit on the right. He was more nationalist, you know, nationalist saying we must build black economics. We must build black businesses. Whereas if you go and you listen to the folks in the socialist, anarchist, communist, Antifa space, they're very anti-business, you know, things like that, anti-family, anti-structure. Um, so why is that important? Well, um, you know, I, I think that uh, one of the pitfalls of the way we pursued our liber liberation up to this point is that some people are led to feel that the black community is a big charity case. You know, um, like, so for example, you think about the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers were best, one of the things they were best known for was uh, the free lunch program, which I thought was, was extraordinary. It's wonderful. Lots of people benefited from it. But my question is this, did it have to be the free lunch program, right? Like, could it have been the, the 25 cent lunch program, the 10 cent lunch program? Right, the one dollar lunch program, whatever, or maybe it could have been a program where the people that got it like that, the people that have money, actually would pay for lunch, so that the people who don't have money don't have to pay hmm. uh, a subsidy model, right? right. Uh, and why is that important? Well, because here's the thing: when when you're doing shit for free, because because you because let's say you've been you've been convinced that black people are a charity case, not you particularly, but you know what I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you've been convinced that black people are a charity case. And the black person you're serving has been convinced that he's a charity case. He has nothing to contribute to you. Then you create an unhealthy, imbalanced, unstable relationship. It can't be sustained because you can't run businesses on nothing. Right. And then what's going to happen is that a lot of the people that you're serving for free, the people who say, well, I, I need you to give me books for free because I can't afford to buy a book. OK, cool. But I better not see you walking down the street with a pair of Jordans on your fucking feet. Okay. You know, if you if, if Popeye's chicken opens up around the corner and you're at Popeye's chicken every day, couldn't you, you could have broke something off for, for the black man that actually cares about you? Mm. Um, you know, like so. So that that's one of the problems. Is we have disproportionate business models, which is why black empowerment has to be from the ground up. It must be a grassroots thing where it's not a matter of saying let's empower a few leaders that are going to go out and be these superheroes that are going to lift the whole community. The whole community must be empowered to say that we're all part of that leadership. We all have a role to play in making sure that Lord Jamar is good. Like, I believe in his podcast. I believe it's important. I believe the community needs our own media. This brother has over 100,000 subscribers. That's extremely important. Well, what part can I play to make sure that he's good, right? Okay, send him a dollar. All right, I'm going to cash app him a dollar a month or $2 or join the Patreon or whatever. And it thank you to everybody that's that has sent uh, during this show right now to the cash app and to the super chat. We, I truly appreciate it. There you go. There you go. And, and, and so, so I, because I think that we should question this idea that, uh, that we're going to have starving leadership, individuals that really have our back, people that are B1 black first all the time, every day, like yourself, that, that, that those individuals are not going to get the support they need, but yet, you got businesses from other communities, white businesses, Arab, Jewish, Chinese, just making a killing off the black community. And we know that these individuals care nothing for us. So um, I, I think it's really mindset, man. I think it's a matter of explaining that narrative to people. And when you explain it to people, logical people are like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. You're right about that. OK, well, here's five dollars. Right. 
And uh, and, I, and I think that that, that sort of thinking, um, I think that's more of the norm. And, and also, I think in general, when you talk about developing those institutions, that's what's really going on. That's what, that's like, that's what you're doing. Like you, your, your platform is one of the many institutions being developed in the community that people can turn to uh, because at some point, some, some shit's really going to go down. Something crazy is going to happen and they're going to turn to your channel to find out what's going on or to get a black perspective. And, and they're going to turn off CNN and MSNBC and Fox and all that stuff. And Vlad TV. And Vlad TV. There you go. There you go. There you go. So, so, so I, I think that we are getting there. Uh, it's going to take a while. Uh, and there are some people who will never get there. But what I have, what I have found, like, like the way we're able to make the black business school move forward, man, is we got people that really get it. And, uh, and we take care of them. They take care of us. And then what it allows us to do is to have a, a, a church like atmosphere where we don't have to be hardcore capitalists. Right. Hardcore capitalism is not healthy. Hardcore socialism is not healthy. Uh, we're allowed to have that double bottom line that says, look, we got to make money. We got black people to work for us. They got bills to pay. We got to take care of them. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, we're not going to break you either. Uh, and so what we, we say to a lot of the, our students, for example, is I say, look, I'm a college professor. Dr. Claude Anderson's a college professor. We got lawyers and doctors and PhDs that are teaching you. But you went to college and you gave them $100,000 and, and they, they even told you they didn't want you there. They don't even like black people. So why not? Do something for Dr. Claude Anderson, a man who's proven time and again how much he loves you. So, so, so I, I think making that argument continuously allows people to kind of understand what we're doing because all of this involves a mindset shift. If we don't shift our mindset, then it's going to be very difficult to shift our reality. 